Hi, this is Pastor Josh, and I just want to thank you for watching or listening to these teachings. Our hope is that through these teachings that you would learn more about God and grow closer to Him in relationship. But we also hope that these would be an additional teaching to what you already receive in your church home. If you don't have a church home, we would love to have you here at Cornerstone. So we do pray that through these teachings that you would hear God through the proclamation of His Word. Well, good morning, Cornerstone Church. Welcome back to our online message uh, or online messages, right? Since we've been doing this for a few weeks now, almost a month, I'm I'm guessing. I know it's been four weeks and so close enough to a month. And uh, maybe you just topped on this video just now from Facebook or YouTube. Uh, We want to welcome you to our Cornerstone Church. We are not gathering at the moment because of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we are... um, Uh, gathering in our own homes um, individually or as families and we try to log on and and watch this message or the message before and and worship the Lord in our own house. Um, Now we could get into what is the church and all those sorts of things. We're not going to do that. I just want to welcome you guest that that's just jumped on is not a member of our church. Uh, Thank you for stopping by and listening to this message. This message is um, really about the proclamation of God's word so that he would be lifted up high and he would be praised and um, as members and maybe non-members, if you're watching this, that, that you would be able to celebrate today, this day, and be reminded of the good news of Jesus Christ because it is absolutely good news. Now, speaking of good news, today is a, a unique day for Christians around the world, um, we call this day Easter or Resurrection Sunday. I, I like to call it Resurrection Sunday. So happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Now, with, with this being Easter or Resurrection Sunday, usually when we gather in the church building, that's where I'm at right now, the church building, usually when we gather in the church building on Easter or Christmas, those are the two days in the year that, that we know as a church um, People that no, don't normally come to the church gathering will show up on those days because it's um, kind of a holiday for them and, and they just come to church with their family. And so today, it's unusual, right? But maybe maybe you're gathered around with your family and you usually don't go to church. And so I'll say to you once, once more, as I said just a minute ago, thank you for stopping and watching this video. I believe that this is the greatest news that you'll ever hear. Uh, better news than the doctor saying you're cancer free. Better news than um, somebody telling you you've won the lottery it, if you play the lottery. Um, better news than any of these things uh, of being engaged and all these sorts of things. This, what we see in the scripture and God's word is best news that we can have. And so, <clears throat> Since we're not technically gathering as a people, um, we're kind of scattered in our own homes, but we're still listening to the Word of God um, through this online teaching. Uh, we might ask that question, can we still have, um, can we still celebrate Easter or still celebrate Resurrection Sunday if we're not all gathered together? Uh, good question, Ryan. And my answer is, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ today, this Sunday. And um, there's some other questions that go along with that, it, like, what is the resurrection? Um, what is the importance of the resurrection and Easter? And does it have any benefit for our lives? All really good questions. And even though we're not gathered on this Resurrection Sunday, These are the questions that I want to address this morning, um, if it's the morning for you. If not, good day to you. Um, But these are the questions that we want to address. And so at this moment, I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll seek to answer uh, those questions about Resurrection Sunday. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We always want to praise you. First and foremost, because we are blessed. And so thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in which you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for a church family. Even though we're not gathered, we know that we are with each other in spirit. 
And we pray for those that are guests or maybe just jumping online now that this message that's from your word and is it about you, that it would just invade their lives like it invaded our lives at one point. For each and every one of us were blind, not physically, but spiritually. And you gave us sight, and so we thank you for that. Father, we pray for our leaders among the world that they would be making the decisions that would glorify you and you alone. And we pray for this pandemic that those that are ill and sick, that you would reveal yourself to them and your will in this. Maybe it's a test for someone. Maybe it's a warning for someone else. Whatever it is that you would reveal that will to them, that you would be glorified and they would find satisfaction in you because life is found in you, God. And so, Lord, as we open up the scripture this morning or this evening, whenever, whatever time of day it is for those watching, we pray that you would bless it, God. And be with me as I am just simply a man. Help me to get out of my own way and to only be led by your Holy Spirit. These are the things in which we ask in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, so if you have your Bible, I, I would invite you and ask you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You've probably heard of this passage many times if you've um, gone to an Easter or Resurrection Sunday gathering. And so it's good for us to be reminded about it. Um, if you say, well, I already know that verse then I could say, well, you've already celebrated Resurrection Sunday, so why are you going to celebrate it again? Uh, we have to return to God's Word. We're very forgetful. We see things there that we didn't see the first time, and so um, that's where we're at today. We're not going to read the whole passage. We're just going to read two verses, just two verses out of 1 Corinthians 15. Um, this is more of a topical message, um, and so that's, that's unusual for me. I don't Pretty much every online message we've been doing has been more topical, um, and in our church we kind of go through books of the Bible, and so this is a little different for us, but that's okay. It's the season in which we are in, and it's where the Lord has led us, so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, and let me give you some background on it. The, the, this is a letter, the book of Corinthians. It is a letter written by a man named Paul. Now, Paul was chosen specifically by God um, to proclaim this good news, which we'll get into in just a moment, to proclaim this good news, not necessarily to the Jews, he wasn't limited to them, but, but more specifically to the Gentiles, that is, to all those people that were not Jewish. And God was um, with him, his spirit was with Paul as he wrote this letter. And so we know that this is a, a letter that was written to Corinth, but it's inspired by God, and, it, and it's God's very own word to us also. And so we want to um, look at this not as just some book of, uh, or a literature book, but we want to look at it as this is God's word, and what does God's word have to say? And so here we go. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, and verse 17. And the message this morning it's very simple. It's, it's really simple. Uh, I'm not going to get into everything, just, just these two verses. So if, if you would look at verse 14 in your own Bible, the Word of God reads this way, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. And then go to verse 17 that says this, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. So we're looking at the resurrection and, and what exactly is Resurrection Sunday? What is Resurrection Sunday all about? And is it beneficial to my life? Not necessarily Resurrection Sunday, but the resurrection. Is it beneficial to my life? And, and I hope that you'll stick with us this morning because by the end of our time together, you will find out that this can be extremely beneficial to your life. So as we get started and we look at uh, verse 14, here's what we first need to look at, is we need to observe what Paul was telling these believers in Corinth. There is one person in mind, really, in verse 14. There is the center of attention 
or everything revolves around this one person in verse 14 is what Paul shares with us. And that one person is Jesus Christ. He says, and if Christ... Now, he, he talks about other people in there, but he, he specifically and intentionally and, and centrally points to Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. Christ, Jesus. Everything revolves around this person, Jesus Christ. And when I say person, I don't want you to mistake uh, and don't make the mistake in thinking that that Jesus is just some normal human person. He's not. Go read the book of John, especially, uh, specifically John chapter 1. Go look at the book of Colossians and Colossians 1 and, and Hebrews and Hebrews 1. And, and these passages in these, in these uh, books of the Bible, they reveal to us that God, or, and not, excuse me, Jesus was not just fully man, but he was fully God. And that he existed um, before he came into human flesh. He existed in all eternity and he was there with God the Father and he really is the one who created the world. Now, if, you, if you're just, your brain is kind of exploding right now and you're thinking, that, how does that work? Fully God, fully man. I can, I can say this, welcome to the club, Okay. We have limits with our minds and our understanding and our reason. How could we ever comprehend God, the maker of the world, and so much more? How can we comprehend Him? We can't. So what we must do is trust in what He has said. And that is what He has said, that Jesus is not just a person, but He is fully God in human flesh so paul here says this is what matters most right here in verse 14 what matters most is jesus it's the central point of this verse and really central point uh, of what he's saying here so so say this after me this this is what matters most what is it jesus jesus this is what matters most that's what Paul is getting at here. And so the concern for Paul as he looks here and he says, look, you're talking about this resurrection. You're talking about being raised from the dead. And I have to point you to how important this actually is. Like, I don't think you understand what you're, you're saying here, Corinth. And we can get into that, uh, what, they're, what they were talking about in just a minute, but 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 what Paul has given us just right here, and really what he's given the Corinthians just right here, is he is telling them because this is what matters most, right? Jesus, he says, Jesus, one hundred percent affects both your life and your death. Jesus affects both your life and your death, dear Christians in Corinth. So pay attention. That's what Paul is saying. And as I, as I look at you through the lens of a camera, I would say the same thing that Paul says. Uh, and Paul's message that applies to you, and it's really God's message that applies to you. That, that Jesus himself 100% affects your life and your death, whether you believe in him or not. He has an effect on you. And I hope for your sake that you will let that be a good effect on your life and not a bad effect. So, so what is this? Uh, what is it that matters most about Jesus here? Why is he so important to us? Look at verse 14 again. He says, And if Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised. He, he, Paul here, he gives us an, an illustration. He's trying to paint a picture for, for these dear believers in Corinth. He, he's trying to explain it to them. And so he uses this if-then kind of statement. Something that you and I, uh, we use these statements today like, um, if you work out, then you'll be in better shape. Or if all you do is eat candy, then you're probably going to have cavities in your teeth. Or if you stay out in the sun too long, then you're going to burn. Um, 
So it's, it's this visual and, and uh, that if this happens, then here's the consequence. And the consequence can be good or can be bad. It just dep- depends on the if. And the expression that he makes here is if Jesus, and you and I know that he is what matters most, both for the Corinthians' lives and for, for your life and my life. So we need to pay attention to what Paul is saying here. He says, if this Jesus, and then he reveals the results. If Jesus, what? Then this is what happens. What is the statement about? The if part is if Jesus has been raised from the dead. If Jesus has been raised, that's the picture Paul points out here. He says, yeah, you remember Jesus? The one who died on the cross? If he has not been raised, excuse me if I said been raised, if he has not been raised, that, my friends and my family, is the resurrection of, That is what we call the resurrection. Not the not been raised. The being raised from dead. We call it the resurrection. Now stay with me because we're going somewhere here this morning. That is what we call the resurrection. of When you're raised from the dead, Jesus specifically, when Jesus was raised from the dead, we call it the resurrection. He had been on a cross and he died on the cross. He had been put into a tomb, and for three days he laid there in that tomb. His body was there. But when they came, oh, let me not get ahead of the story here. When he rose from the dead, that is called the resurrection. And Paul says, if that did not happen, then here are the consequences for Jesus Christ not being resurrected from the dead. Now there's some background into what they're talking about. They're they're talking about what happens to you when you die and all these sorts of things. And so Paul's giving this illustration here. But, But we can just focus on if Jesus is not resurrected, then what are the results? And Paul gives us the results at the end of verse 14. He says this, Then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. He goes, our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. And just take the first consequence. Our preaching is in vain. The preaching, what is to preach? Is to proclaim something. It's to herald something. Like like standing up and and, uh, blowing a trumpet so everybody could hear. And Paul says this. If Christ has not been resurrected, then our preaching... Our proclamation, our sounding the trumpet, trumpet, is in vain. Basically, this our message is meaningless. The message in which we proclaim is meaningless. That's what Paul says. If Christ, if you're talking about the resurrection, and if Christ was not resurrected three days later, then all of the preaching in which you and I have done. And everyone else who will do after us, it will be utterly meaningless, utterly useless, good for nothing. It is in vain. So, what is the message that Paul was preaching? What is the message that they were preaching? Because he says, and are preaching. What's that message? Because, Paul, we need to know what the message is. What's the message that you are saying is meaningless? And we get the answer in verse 17. Now, there's some more if-then statements in there. But look, let's look specifically at 17 and what he says here. He says, and if Christ has not been raised, so he repeats it again. He's just giving you this visual, making it 3D now. And if Christ is not, has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. The last part there. You are still in your sins. That is what tells us what the message of Paul and the message um, that they were giving, proclaiming out. The message was not, 
you are still in your sins. It was the opposite of that. That message was this. Your sins can be forgiven. Your sins can be removed. Your sins can be done away with. That was one of the main messages and proclamations that Paul and the early church was making is, was this specific thing. Your sins can be forgiven. Now, I don't know about you, but that is great news for me. Because brothers and sisters and friends that are watching, it is... How would I put it? Remarkable that I get to preach His Word, God's Word. It is amazing to me that I get to serve a church. And when I say church, I am talking about people. Men and women of all ages, boys and girls. To serve them and and to try to lead them to know more about God. I am amazed at that because I look at the history of my life. I even look at some of the present things in my life. And they're very upsetting. I'm ashamed at many of the things that I've done in my life. I I hate some of the history that I have. I, I hate the things that I've thought of. And maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you're just like me. Maybe you're not. Maybe you don't care. But when I look in the mirror, and when I look in the mirror of my past, and how I've treated friends, and how I've I've treated uh, relationships, and how I've treated my family, and the things that I thought of, like I said, and my goals, and all these sorts of things, and I look to God's Word, and I compare the two, and and I see that I have greatly missed God's way for me i've greatly sinned against my god and that upsets me that breaks me that um, humiliates me in a way not god humiliating me but i'm humiliated by the fact that i would do that and so when paul says here that their message was really the opposite of your, your sin, you're still in your sins. The, the message was this, your sins can be forgiven and you don't have to be in your sin anymore. That is wonderful news to me because I know my sin and my sin runs very deep and it runs very wide and there's no way that I could ever make up for my sin. Do you hear what I'm saying? Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you. And that's Paul would talk to you. God would be giving you that same message. I mean, there is, there's absolutely nothing I could ever do as a person, as a human, to, to, to how would I say that, to equal myself out to all the wrong that I've done in my life, uh, much less to, to overcome all the wrong that I've done in my life. I'm, I'm 31 years old, so for 31 years of my life, there's been things I'm so ashamed uh, to, I won't even mention. But let's say I live to 100 so that I have 70 more years. Let's say, let's say I have uh, good genes, right? Not, not blue genes, good, good genes. So I'm going to live to 100, which means I have about 70 years left of my life, or 60-ish, right? Well, that's a lot more than 30. And if I could live the rest of my life, you know, doing all the right things and just being kind and being gracious, being loving and really being perfect, or at least being 95% perfect all the time, even that would not bring me back. I have fallen short of God's standard. And I couldn't live 70 more years in in doing things all perfect and, and, and make it better. Here's why. I'll just give you this visual. Let's say I baked you some brownies, okay? 
made you a dozen brownies. I wrapped them up real nice. I put a little bow on them, put your name on them. I did the calligraphy and just made your name beautiful. Then I put it in a basket and made that basket beautiful. And I knocked on your door and I said, here, I made you um, a dozen brownies. I love you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. And you say, oh, thank you. And I turn around and I say, oh, you know what? Wait one second. I, I did sneeze at one point while I was making the brownies and a booger flew out of my nose into those brownies and it, it just covered up. I couldn't tell where the booger was. And so I just thought, well, it's just one tiny little booger and there's a lot of brownies in here. It's like maybe 0.05% of the brownies. So I figured you, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't mind eating the brownies with that little thing in there. You probably aren't, you know, you'll be all right. And you, you would look at me and you would hand me the basket back if you wouldn't just throw up, right? You would hand me that basket back and say, oh, I'm good, I don't want the brownies. And I'm talking about one little booger. I know, it's funny. One little booger and a, and a, and a dozen brownies. And I have to tell you this, that, that one little sin in your life and in my life has ruined the whole batch it has ruined our entire life we have sinned we have broken god's way we have rebelled against god's way and that should bring us to shame because we know god would never receive us with sin in our life just as you wouldn't receive brownies with a booger in it right the booger is 0.05% of the brownies. But sin in our lives, and I know I'm speaking to you because I look at myself in the mirror, sin in our lives isn't 0.05%. It's probably not even 50%. But it's a much higher percentage rate. How often do we sin in our lives? And we expect to go to God one day and to say, God, I'm here. See, sin is a serious thing. And Paul says here, if Christ has not been raised, then you are still in your sins, believers. Because he's talking to Christian believers here. Now, if you're not a believer, you haven't received the good news of the message yet. Maybe you have and you've denied it. But either way, you're, you're still in your sins. And this is one of the consequences of Christ not being raised from the dead it, it, is that the preaching of, God, of this message and the message is you can be forgiven for your sins. So you make it in reverse. You are, no, you are still in your sins. So the message is in vain and the message is in vain because Christ has not been resurrected. That's consequence number one. But Paul says the, the, the reality is sin can be removed. So we can be forgiven. We can be wiped clean. You can receive a batch of brownies with no uh, boogers in them. Okay? A, a beautiful set of brownies that are perfect. They were made with gloves. It is pure and you can enjoy it. It's the same with us. We can be received by God because of what Jesus has done. Now, why don't we have forgiveness? As we, as we look here, you are still in your sins. If Christ hasn't been raised, you are still in your sins, meaning you do not have forgiveness if Christ has not been raised. And I know that you, the answer isn't like, <coughs> well, well, for example, he says here that, that it is necessary. It's necessary for Jesus to die. Because if he doesn't, we're still in our sin. So, or not die, excuse me. Not just die. He had to be resurrected, everyone. Jesus had to be resurrected for us to have forgiveness of sins. That's what verse 14 and 17 combined together reveal to us. And I know you and I don't want to just accept this, uh, this, what God's word says as far as like, 
You're still in your sins if there's no resurrection. We want to know the whys. We want to know is why does the resurrection matter? Why? Tell us. And I'll try to give you an explanation um, in a short amount of time, but I can't promise you that I'll be able to give that to you. I believe only God will. Here is what the resurrection reveals. Here is what Jesus being uh, raised from the dead reveals. It is this. It is the power to overcome death and to defeat sin. Power. It's power. Let me go back here real fast. Verse 17, you are still in your sins. Sins. Paul says that you are still in your sins. And what he's he's really showing us is that is not a good place to be. To be in your sin is not a good place to be because there is um, a judgment for that sin. There is a judgment for that sin. So we talk about, you know, in church and in Christianity, we talk about Jesus dying on the cross all the time. And we have to talk about that. We must talk about it. It is necessary to talk about that. He died on the cross, and what, he, what we, are, we see in the Scripture is he, he put the weight of the world on him. He put the sins of the world on him and died on the cross. But God says um, here that the resurrection was necessary for us to have forgiveness of sins, not just the death of Jesus, but he had to be resurrected over over sin see if 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 jesus dies on the cross and he just stays in the tomb then sin has defeated jesus and death has defeated jesus sin is what killed him and and since he's killed now he's dead and so he's lying there in the tomb and he has been defeated by sin and death But when the resurrection happens, when he raises from the dead, what that shouts out to the world is that Jesus has power and has overcome and has conquered both death and sin, everyone. It is necessary because it reveals the power of Jesus to not just be put to death by sin and death, but to overcome sin and death. And, and, and listen to this. If he overcomes it, then that is really good news because that means he can help others out. He can help you and I out to overcome sin and death because he's defeated it. Because he died for it on my behalf and on your behalf for sin to be forgiven. So that is where we get this message, that you can trust in the message. See, if he doesn't die, go back to verse 14, our preaching is in vain, and he says this, in addition, our faith is in vain. Our faith, our belief, and what we trust in. He says it again in verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Futile and vain is your faith. If Christ has not been resurrected, futile and faith, or yeah, futile and and vain. Without the resurrection, our faith. It doesn't matter how passionate you are. If Christ was never resurrected, you you can you can shout as loud as you want to shout. You can you can cry in emotion. You can spin in circles of joy and say, "I have faith. I have the joy of the Lord in my heart." You can do all those things. You can be um, extremely disciplined. You can get up at four in the morning, study an hour, pray an hour, uh, do it again at lunchtime, do it in the evening, and do it late at night. Once again, you can be disciplined in these things you can have a great uh, knowledge of the bible and just know it know it front and back and know the original language of greek and hebrew you can even have hope and just say oh i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it you can you can have all those things but that faith is meaningless is what paul tells us if christ has not been resurrected from the dead because 
That faith is not backed up by power. That faith is not backed up by power. Now look at the religions in the world. Look at your own beliefs and see if that is backed up by power. They're not. There's only one reality in this world that is backed up by power. It is the good news, the message that we have from Jesus Christ. It's not just the good news because He says it, but because it is backed up by the power of God in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what Paul is getting to here. He's working it all the way backwards. So back to verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, that's his whole point. He starts out with, look, if this is the reality, then he goes into the consequences and he shows those results. And what you're left with is, oh, that's a really bad situation. And this can't be the truth. What is the truth, Paul? And he just flips it all the way back and he says, look, he did resurrect from the dead. So, so think about this, verse 14. I'm going to reverse it for us. So if Christ has not been raised, well, let's change it. Christ has indeed been raised. Christ is indeed resurrected from the dead. Therefore, then, our preaching is in vain. No longer in vain. Our preaching is not in vain. Our preaching has meaning. And your faith is in vain. No it, does, no, it isn't. Our faith matters. Verse 17. And if Christ, reverse it, has been raised, your faith is not futile. It matters. And you are still in your sins. No, I'm not. We have no sins because of Jesus Christ. Do you hear why the resurrection matters? So we, we kind of see this here. Of what Paul is talking about in the resurrection. He just, he just uses this visual. If Christ hasn't been raised, then the preaching is, is useless. That is, the message is useless. Because the message can't save you. It doesn't matter how good of a faith you have. It can't save you. Why? Because there's no power behind it. There's no truth behind it. That it can conquer sin and conquer death. But... If there's power behind it, which means Jesus has conquered sin and conquered death, then that means your faith actually matters in life, which means the message that we give out has meaning, and we can proclaim that. Why? Because Christ has indeed been resurrected from the dead. So we have a great message that we must get out, and we have a great faith that we must keep. A message and a faith is what Paul shows us here. So let's come in for a landing, okay? I've taken you on this plane trip. We've taken off by beginning 1 Corinthians 15, and we've kind of observed it. There's so much more. But now we're going to land this plane. And we're going to land it by answering those questions in which I gave you in the very beginning. What is Resurrection Sunday? Why, why, what is Easter all about? Well, Resurrection Sunday, it doesn't tell us anywhere in the Scriptures that this is the day that we have to do this. Resurrection Sunday is a time in which Christians have decided at least once a year we want to emphasize the resurrection. We want to celebrate and to remember in a unique and special way that Christ has indeed been risen from the dead. And we have power for our message and we have truth for our faith. And it all matters. And in reality, you should have a resurrection uh, day every single day of your life. Every day you wake up, you should be reminded of the resurrection. But you know how we are. We get into slumps and we have seasons and we have this and that. And so as a church and as other churches in, in, across the world, we've just decided that this is the Sunday that we're going to celebrate and emphasize the resurrection. That is, what the res- that is what Resurrection Sunday is. That's what Easter is. Now, what is it about? It is about praising God. It is about uh, coming together to hear the good news once more, to be reminded that we are no longer in our sins, right? Because we have a faith that matters. Because we have a message that is meaningful. Because we have a risen 
Christ has been a risen Christ. He's been raised from the dead, right? So it's about Jesus. The Resurrection Sunday is about Jesus. And it benefits, right? What are the benefits of the Resurrection Sunday? And just the resurrection in general? Does it affect your life? Does it affect my life in any way? Well, I can't say yes to you. And what I mean is this. It can be beneficial to your life. And it will be the most, uh, not most beneficial, yeah, you could say that, the most beneficial um, thing in your life to receive what Christ has done by living a perfect life, dying on the cross for sins, and resurrecting, conquering both sin and death. That can be the most beneficial thing in your life if you receive it. If you believe it, if you trust in it, remember this is the message. I am proclaiming the message as Paul has proclaimed the message. I am sharing it with you today. Believers, if you're hearing this once again, you should be excited about this good news. And if you do not yet believe, you, you should be itching to say, wait a minute, I can, I can be forgiven of my sin? I, the failure to God, I don't have to do anything but, but trust in Him? Not that, you know... Not that it's just like, oh, I just trust in God and I'm done. No, but you are saved by putting your faith. Paul says it, our faith is in vain. 17, your faith is futile. It is by faith. It is by trusting in this message that you receive that benefit. You receive the benefit of knowing what life is all about. You receive the benefit of getting to know God now and forevermore. You receive the benefit of having an abundant life, um, a life full of joy, a life full of love, a life full of peace, a life that is on a journey to look just like God's. And, and it's a life that is that even though we still sin, we're forgiven for our sin, but we have a future where there will be no more sin. We have that future promise to us. And that is the life that we have, a life now and a life for eternity. So is the resurrection beneficial for our lives? It can be. I I can tell you for, uh, golly, now 14 years, 13 years, I have been a Christian. Most beneficial, best days of my life. Things aren't perfect. Things go crazy, right? Right? I'm in the pandemic just as you're in the pandemic. I go to the store and can't buy the things that that are all sold out just as much as you can't buy those things. But one of the, 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 the benefits for my life is I get to walk with the Lord. And when I can't buy the milk because all the milk is gone or the eggs, let's say the eggs, right? You can't buy eggs because all the eggs are gone. The Lord points you to something else. He's, and he says, you know, Man doesn't live by bread alone, lives by the word of God. And as much as you desire to to buy those eggs and to eat those eggs, and you went to this store and to that store and that store to look for eggs so that you can have breakfast in the morning, I'm asking you as the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart and he says, have you sought me in that same way? Did you go to this store and that store and that store searching for a Bible? Or, Or did you wake up at this time and this time and this time and just sit with me because you desired to be fed spiritually. See, I could go on and on about the benefits of God, but here's the thing. Let me make it just very simple for us. Okay, today as a church, we we decide to we decided to um, emphasize the resurrection because we believe it matters. It is vital, absolutely necessary for our faith and and for our message. And we believe it that we have a powerful message to to offer to you. And for believers, we want to be reminded that our faith isn't futile, it isn't vain, it is not dead, it matters. So rejoice in this day by trusting in the Lord, everyone, and keep trusting in Him, saying, I have joy because my faith matters. I have a message that I want to proclaim. Why? Because what is it all about? As we said in the beginning, Jesus and the resurrection. So, believe, keep trusting in Jesus and the power of the resurrection for the forgiveness of sins and to know God once again. May the Lord be with you. Amen.